Well, good morning, everybody. I know I'm on a little early today, but I uh, hope you're having a great beginning to this week. As we uh, kick off this week, focused on Him once again, uh, just excited about what God is doing, you know, here and in your life, you know, as well. And so, you know, as we continue this path, uh, just go ahead and jump into Luke chapter 22. We're going to finish the chapter, you know, these next few moments today. So in Luke 22, verse, we're going to start in verse 63. So I know it's a little late, but we were talking about uh, Jesus' last week, specifically the crucifixion and resurrection. And so we're just kind of making our way through this whole uh, this whole uh, book. So in verse 63, this is uh, after Peter has denied Christ. We jump into verse 63. The guards in charge of Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and said, prophesy to us, who hit you that time? And they hurled all sorts of terrible insults at him. Uh, it's interesting because the nature that we have, if we're not connected to God, oftentimes can become an enemy of God. And you can read about that in Romans 5.10, Colossians 1.21. So literally, you know, this is man's attempt to hit God, to be angry at God, to be frustrated at God. And here we see the, the evil of man in the face of God. Uh, it's interesting though, is that however, the, the, how much they mocked, uh, it's ironic, uh, that, uh, even after Peter's denied Jesus Christ, uh, just as Jesus predicted, uh, it still showed, uh, that Jesus was in control, that Jesus was in charge. Um, it, it was, it was important that Jesus showed and replied to hate is not more hate. So notice that Jesus did not reply with hate, with hate, but with love. It's important to demonstrate that Jesus' trust in God the Father, that God would vindicate him, and he didn't need to defend himself. So just pause right there. So first, the proper response to hate is not more hate, but actually it's love. Secondly, that we demonstrate our trust in God the Father, that we don't put judgment in our hands, we trust that he's going to be judged. And third, it's important that those who are abused and humiliated can find refuge in a God who knows their experience. So those who of you may, who may be watching who have been humiliated, who have been verbally, physically, you know, struck or abused, Jesus can relate. Jesus can empathize. Jesus sits in our pain as well. And so it's it's fascinating, you know, to see, you know, the love that Jesus has even for these people. That he says, I, I went to the cross for them. And I don't know about you, but that would be very, very hard for me. And then it says, at daybreak, all the elders of you know, the people assembled, including the lead, leading priests and teachers of religious law. And that was because uh, the night before they did an illegal trial, you know, one that was at nighttime. Jesus was led before this high council. So now it's going to be legit, you know, and they said, tell us, are you the Messiah? But he replied, if I tell you, you won't believe me. And gosh, what another great reminder. How many times have he told us, but we've chosen not to believe, to entrust ourselves to him. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the son of man will be seated in the place of power at God's right hand. They all shouted, so you are claiming to be the son of God. And he replied, you say that I am. Why do we need any other witnesses? They said, we heard ourselves uh, that he has said it. And yeah, and so they're thinking, we finally got him. We trapped him. Uh, he said something against our laws. And so now he needs to be killed. He needs to be done away with because nobody can be claim or be God unless they actually are God, which I don't think it ever dawned on him that he actually is who he said he was. And so as we go throughout today, my encouragement, my prayer is that you and I, in the things that we're processing, I mean, just think about the people, you know, who are currently hurting us. May we, re may we respond in love. And I'm saying that for me as much as for anybody else. For anybody who uh, has gone through things and said, you know what, I need to defend myself. Can we entrust God to be the great defender of who we are? And also, if we've all gone through pain and suffering, uh, even currently in this life, can we understand that Jesus is right there with us? And he often uses other people to come alongside us in our moments of grief, in our moments of pain. And so where may you be today? You know, where might you be? Uh, are you a person who is going through something where you're just having a struggle with another believer? Somebody else, maybe even just even another person. May you respond to the hate and evil you receive. May you respond in love. 
If you're a person, you know, who has gone through some hard times and trust God's judgment. And thirdly, again, if you're a person who has gone through and received abuse, understand that your God, my God, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, has gone through the same thing. And may we entrust ourselves to him on this day. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much that you are uh, a God who understands. You are a God of justice. And you are a God who can give us the courage to respond in love when we want to respond hate with hate. And so God, give me that understanding. Give me that help as I continue to wrestle with the things uh, that other people do. Help me entrust myself to you and you alone and help all of us to do the same. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll see you tomorrow as we jump into the next chapter. We are now, I can't believe it, in Luke chapter 23. So important stuff. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.